in the final month of this campaign, Donald Trump is going to heavily Democratic states to campaign. Why? All right, let's dig in. So we've got, you know, under a month left of the campaign, in case you hadn't noticed, breaking news. Um, in that time, Donald Trump has rallies planned in the following states, California, Colorado, Illinois, and New York. Now, his average margin of defeat in those four states in 2020 was 20 points. The closest he came to winning any of those four states was Colorado, which he lost by 13 points. And the only one of those four states to vote for a Republican since the year 2000, also Colorado in 2004, which really does beg the question, what the hell is he doing? So I think there's a bunch of things going on here. Let's start with the official Trump campaign line via NBC News. I'm going to read I'm going to read a quote from a senior Trump campaign advisor on this strategy. Quote, choosing high impact settings makes it so the media can't look away and refuse to cover the issues and the solutions President Trump is offering. We live in a nationalized media environment and the national media's attention on these large scale outside the norm settings increases the reach of his message across the country and penetrates in every battleground state. President Trump is closing the campaign, highlighting the problems the country faces as a result of Harris and Biden's failed leadership and articulating his solutions to solve the problems they created. Okay, fine, but he can uh, highlight Harris and Biden's failed leadership and articulate his solutions to the problems they created in swing states where it's going to matter, like Arizona, Nevada, uh, Georgia, North Carolina, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. Right. He could do, he doesn't need to do that in New York at Madison Square Garden. So that official line doesn't make a ton of sense to me, because if Donald Trump does a rally in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, it's going to get national coverage. If he does a rally in Mesa, Arizona, it's going to get national coverage. If he does a rally in Reno or Fayetteville or Atlanta. They're all going to get national coverage. It's the end of the campaign. He's the former president and the Republican presidential nominee. The idea he's not going to get covered is ridiculous. Okay. So that doesn't make sense. So what's really going on? Well, I think there's a somewhat smart political thing, maybe. And then what I think is the real answer. Let's do the somewhat smart political thing. So there are congressional races, particularly in Colorado, uh, Long Island, so New York, and parts of California, that it makes sense to try to get Republicans as excited as possible and drive Republican-based turnout. So do I think that's the main reason Trump is doing this? I do not. He's never really cared deeply about the broader Republican Party, unless it helps him. That's never been a focus of his. So I'm a little skeptical that that's the main reason that in the last month of the campaign, he's focused on electing House members as opposed to getting himself elected. OK, but there may be some ancillary benefits to those House members in him doing these uh, rallies in safe Democratic states. The real reason, I think, is because he kind of does what he wants. You know, yes, there's a campaign team, but he does what he wants. Uh, he has said repeatedly over and over again, he's going to win New York. Now, he's not going to win New York. He lost by 23 points to Joe Biden in 2020. He lost by 22 and a half points to Hillary Clinton in 2016. I think he'll probably lose by less than that. He could lose by 13 or 14. But remember, we live in the Electoral College. Whether you lose by one vote, you don't get the electoral votes. And he's not getting the electoral votes in New York. Colorado is another good example. So he obviously made a very big deal out of false claims he made and that were coming out of Aurora. Uh, in Colorado, uh, where he said Venezuelan immigrants had overrun the town and were there were no services available to people who live there. And it was it was the nightmare scenario that he's painted for uh, undocumented immigration in this country. OK, Th those claims were not true, but he wants to go there because he wants to say, see, I'm here. I'm the one fighting for you. Right. There's symbolism. Uh, California, it's a gigantic state. He has said before he wants to win it. He's not going to win it. Um, and same thing with Illinois, right? I mean, these are just big states with big media markets that he likes to be exposed to, that he's done business in in the past, that it's sort of a flight of fancy. You know, New York, especially because he's from there. Obviously, he doesn't live there anymore, but he's from there. He considers it his hometown, home state. I think he thinks he can win. He can't. Um, so I just think, like, in some ways, it's like it's not worth the campaign advisors fighting Trump on this stuff because he's going to do what he wants, no matter what, 
right? I think you got to say like, okay, we got 27 days left. Um, can we throw away three of them or four of them? We'd really not like to, but if it's going to make him mad, if we don't do this, let's just do it. Now, from a purely political strategy standpoint, this is incredibly stupid. Probably should have put that at the beginning. This is stupid, and I'll tell you why. The candidate's time is always the most precious commodity of a campaign. Always. It's the thing that you have. It's the thing you have the most le the, the least of, right? It's a finite capacity. They can only stay up so many hours in a day, travel, all that stuff. So where you choose to put them matters. That's always true in the context of a presidential campaign. It's especially true when there's less than a month left in the presidential campaign. And polling suggests that in every one of the seven swing states I listed earlier, it's in the margin of error between Trump and, and Harris. Neither of them have a lead outside of the margin of error. So little things matter. The attention you get in the eerie media market if you do an event there could matter, right? We could be talking about 10, 20,000 votes deciding this in Georgia or Arizona or Nevada or you know any of these, North Carolina. So to spend the candidate's precious time doing these sorts of events where he could get the same amount of attention and coverage if it was in a swing state as if it was in a non-swing state like New York or Illinois does not make sense. It is right on the verge of campaign malpractice. I basically give the Trump campaign strategists a pass because I'm sure they told him that. I'm certain. He just doesn't listen. Trump, breaking news, does what Trump wants to do. Trump wants to go to these big media markets. He wants to say he's going to win New York. He said it a couple days ago. He wants to say he's going to be competitive in California and he's going to be competitive in Colorado. And he wants to highlight the undocumented workers in Colorado, even though that story was BS. These are what he wants. And it's ultimately he is the candidate, the campaign manager and the lead strategist. That's always going to be true because he's never going to let anyone else have that mantle. Right. That's just, this is the campaign, right? It's Trump. This is Trump. Like, yes, in a smart political world, you would not do these things, but Donald Trump does so many things that make no sense politically. And candidly, many of them have worked for him. So who am I to say? But I would say from a political 101 perspective, campaign malpractice to let the candidate do this, but the candidate does whatever he wants, so you can't really stop him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's it for me today. Stay tuned. It's going to be a different time for my live stream tomorrow because I'm going to be in Utah. I'm going out there to give a talk. So I'm, I'm flying out to Utah today. So I'm going to be in Utah. So I'm going to figure out I will make time to do a chat. I hope I can do like a full hour, but I'll do my best. But it'll probably be a little later East Coast time. Maybe I'm thinking maybe around like um, 2 East Coast or 1.30 p.m. East Coast. Uh, I'll send something out in the morning or later tonight when I figure out my details. But so I'll do that tomorrow. I will make sure to take your questions. So we'll do some of that before I head back to the airport to come back to DC. Um, in the meantime, subscribe to this channel. Easy. Uh, thumbs up this video. Uh, comment on this video for the algorithm. And finally, tell not five, but 10 friends. That's what we're talking about, people. Or enemies, 10 enemies, either way. As long as they subscribe, we don't care. <laughs> All right, everybody, see you tomorrow.